absolutely need to be in prayer for so many of our leaders around the world right now who are facing massive disruption and adaptive change, where we're not so sure about what needs to happen. And so many of our cultural norms, practices and habits need to be adapted for the challenge that we face. So let's pray for that. At the time that Christ came into this world, the nation of Israel was also crying out for rescue, for a new type of leadership. The problem seemed very simple, occupation by a foreign force. And therefore the solution seemed equally simple. Simply get rid of them and now all the problems go away. And yet Jesus came with a very different message. He made it very clear that he had come to serve, not to be served. That he had come to give life, not to take it. And rather than running away from the cross, he would face the cross to bring about a victory and hope, not just for that people, but for all people everywhere at all time. Jesus models the very heart of servant leadership. Maybe out of all of the named Christian festivals, Good Friday is one of the hardest to really understand. We can understand why we celebrate at Christmas and at other times, but what's so good about Good Friday when Jesus Christ went to the cross? What is the name? What is so good about it? The main challenge, of course, is if we have a superficial diagnosis, we'll always apply a superficial remedy. The remedy will never be sufficient to the challenge that we face. And so the ultimate question is what has ultimately gone wrong in this world? And the answer runs far deeper and goes much further than many of us dare or care to admit. We see it right there in the Genesis, in the book of Genesis in the Garden of Eden. When Adam and Eve turn away from God, what happens? Well, the consequences are huge. They're no longer happy with who they are. They want to cover up. They begin to blame each other for what has happened and ultimately blame God. God. They also, at that point, when God enters the garden, run away from him rather than to him. The work which they have suddenly becomes labor and the very environment which they're in suddenly becomes hostile. There's a form of social alienation, spiritual alienation, vocational alienation, ecological alienation, and also vocational alienation. At every single level, things suddenly get harder. The whole fabric of reality has been affected. That's the depth of the problem. And then when we understand the depth of the problem, the scale of the solution then begins to come into very clear relief. The cross is not some kind of massive overreaction by God or some kind of demonstration of a good example by Jesus Christ. It goes so much further than that. This morning I was speaking with my mother just to remind me of a story that happened to me in my childhood. When 18 months old, I fell into a river while I was out on a walk with her. She hadn't seen me go in, so when her friend Claire jumped into the river in the middle of winter, fully clothed, boots and everything, my mother thought it was an act of madness. But when she saw my head bob up, and apparently I was laughing at the time, all of a sudden she could understand what had been done. That woman stepped in to save my life, and what seemed to be an act of madness initially suddenly, seemed, was suddenly understood to be the kindest, most loving thing that anyone could possibly have done made all the more dramatic by the fact that I was totally unaware that I even needed rescuing. In the book of Titus it says that when the goodness and loving kindness of God our Saviour appeared, he saved us, not because of works done by us in our own righteousness, but according to his own mercy. What Claire did for me could only be clearly really seen and appreciated after she had already saved me. That's when we appreciated the scale and my mother could appreciate the scale of what had been done. And so much of that is like with the cross. The evidence of this broken world and alienated world is all around us and we see it in our lives and we read about it on the news every single day. But it's only when we really understand also how much it costs God to step in to rescue and turn the situation around that we really realize how loving, how kind this God is. A God who passes not only judgment in this world as he has every right to do, but also affects a solution which he brings about through the cross. And at the cross, we see both that salvation and that solution all now coming together. Good Friday is good, not because we were good, not because of any righteous thing we had done. Good Friday is good because of what he has done. The word righteousness, when it's used in the scripture, doesn't simply refer to God's moral standards. It does refer to that, but it refers to more. When we talked about the righteousness of God, it also meant for the Hebrew mind, remembering the acts of history in which God stepped in in order to save. That's when we see the righteousness of God displayed. And that's why in the books of Romans, it says, we now see God's righteousness more brilliantly displayed. Not that God is now purer than he was, but rather he has now stepped in, into the murky rivers of our life, jumped into all of that muck, and we now see this beautiful act in history in order to save and rescue us. Titus goes on to say, because we know what it is to have this love and kindness, we will also serve others. We're not just simply heirs of it, although that is true, and we now have security for eternity with him. It also becomes the basis in which we also realize we have to be diligent in making sure that we do good works and that we learn to serve. 
When we repent and turn to Christ, we find that new life. I hope you'll find it. God bless you.